But as long as you're here, we're going to get into a draft. All right. So we've got our draft here. It's going to be team minus 10 armor on the left, team Randy Newman on the right. Minus 10 armor did get the... They did get the first pick in the draft, map pick. That Alterac pass was chosen by Team Randy Newman. And it will be the Zul ban. Zul, it's a meta ban. It's just a meta ban. Let's actually take a look, though, and see how much does Team Randy Newman actually play this. They have played two games on Zul, which isn't a huge amount. It's not... Although, Team Randy Newman also really has a pretty significant spread on their hero pool, considering that they've played... They've played eight games so far this season. Possibly more, actually, depends on uh, if the hero's profile stat is completely updated. But the biggest number of picks they have on any single hero is three. So three, so their picks are actually spread out quite a bit, and Zul is something they've picked up twice. So it's, aside of that being a meta ban, it's something that's definitely possible that Randy Newman p could pick up. No, on the other side, Team Randy Newman, they did ban out the ETC, and ETC is one of the most commonly played heroes for minus 10 armor. Team mi minus 10 armor's most commonly played heroes are... Thrall, ETC, Garrosh, Jaina, and Rhaegar. All those team, all those uh, heroes, they have three picks on as well. So there seems like there's quite a bit of a spread on minus ten, ar ten armors picks as well. But it seems like a little bit more of a focus. I wonder if we'll see the Garrosh ban next, because the Garrosh ban that would be the other most played tank. And yes, so we do see the Garrosh ban, and. So there are, there are a lot of important implications of this. First of all, we have the most commonly played tanks for minus 10 armor is banned out. Now, they do have first pick. I think they they might want to use their first pick on a tank right now. Because aside from the fact that their most commonly played tanks have been banned out, we already have a very significant tank choke because of the fact that three tanks are banned. And tank is a role where if a lot of the bans are actually used up on tanks... Oh my god. Um... There are actually fairly few tanks left in the pool. And that Blaze that could be a Blaze main tank could be a Blaze offlane. But again, the tank choices are getting very limited. But man, talk about spicy draft. It's going to be Team Randy Newman making no secret that they, that tonight's going to be crazy. And they're going to start us off with some Samuro Abathur pickup in the 1-2 slot. So a new Brack will be picked up. So it will be Blaze in the solo lane, which I do like better anyway. And I do also like the tank priority by the members of Minus 10 Armor. Because this could potentially leave Randy Newman in a difficult position. They have to pick up their tank. Choices are relatively limited now. What is even left? There is Diablo left. There is Muradin left. Who, who else is left? Like, I actually get to the point where I literally need to ask, what tanks are there in the game? And off the top of my head, I'm only remembering... Okay, there's there's actually still Mylgana, so there's still some decent options left. But Minus 10 Armor can actually use this opportunity to ban out another tank and just make it so that Randy Newman's choices are very, very thin. So let's see if they will choose to continue that tank choke. It's basically down to Mylganus, Diablo, and Muradin. And Muradin, in my opinion, as I've said a few times on different streams... I don't really think he is a good choice. Uh, it's really more of a choice that comes up when you don't have many options left, and it will be. So that basically leaves Diablo and Murden. So this is a rough situation for Team Randy Noom. They have very limited tank pickups. At this point, it doesn't matter if they pick it up now. They could even save their tank choice for last, because obviously minus 10 armor is not going to be picking up another tank. It would tank their <laughs> draft if they did. They've got enough tanks already. Now, although I generally don't like the Muradin... Okay, and they will decide to hold their tank pick until last. I do think it might actually work out here with the comp that they're going for. I do think uh, Abathur Hat on Muradin can actually do a lot of work. But, uh, I mean, Randy Newman did fell, fall victim to the tank choke. Now, I don't know if the tank choke will necessarily make or break the game for him, but it's definitely not an ideal situation to not have something like, I don't know, ETC at the ready. I mainly say Diablo and ETC. Theoretically, you can also consider Tyrael, but I don't think Tyrael would synergize well with their team. Some people might even argue an Arthas. Normally, I'm a big hater on Arthas, but Arthas with an Abathur might actually be able to work. At least a big hater on main tank Arthas. Arthas as a solo laner is 
good in some circumstances, but main tank Arthas is, is generally a pretty bad idea. All right, then. So these final pickups by minus 10 armor, interesting. The Kael'thas actually not so surprising. It will indeed be the Diablo in the end, and if I had to pick, I think I do like that choice better. Oh, actually, you know what? There are a lot of things I like about, even though I, I have a feeling that the Diablo was not their first choice, I actually like the way their draft eventually went because there's very big combo potential. The combo potential is it should be opening up with the Deckard Silence, the Stay a While and Listen. After Deckard opens up with the Stay a While and Listen, the next the next sequence in the combo should be Diablo's APOC. Uh, and then finally should be Sylvanas with the Wailing Arrow right after that. Theoretically, it doesn't actually matter. Definitely you want the APOC before the Wailing Arrow actually connects, but the timing for the Wailing Arrow does not have to be too far behind the APOC. So there's a big combo opportunity out of Team Randy Newman. So even though I think they got choked out of tanks, and I don't feel like Diablo was their original plan, I actually still look like what they were able to put, to put together. All right, so we're about to get ready to go into our first game in this series. Let's introduce our teams. It's going to be Minus 10 Armor fighting for their second win in this season. Going to be Rumblerfish on the Kalthos, Johnny K.A. on the Morales. Dav will be playing as the Anubrak, or maybe he's Dave, but Dav seems to make more sense. Dagny will be playing as Rainer, and finally it's going to be Lompico on the Blaze. Meanwhile, Team Randy Newman, or as I like, sometimes like to call him, Team Wandy Woman, even though Wandy Woman isn't playing. It's going to be Randall Newman on the... I can't even tell. Let's just actually go to Randy Nudeman on the Samuro. Nandy Ruman on the Deckard, Randy Newman on the Abathur, Randy Newman on the Diablo, and finally Randall Newman on the Sylvanas. So immediately we actually see minus 10 armor, choosing not to kind of elect into the starting mid-fight, and instead just focus on soaking experience. We already have Kjalthas as well as Blaze separating off into their lanes, looking to just starting to get some soak. Meanwhile, Dagny, as well as Dav, looking to just clear out this middle lane. I like the way Nandy Ruman already is trying to set up and entrench with those with those potions set up. Meanwhile, Dagny was engaged on by the Diablo, but there is a response that does actually put some peel on him so that he's not actually under too much threat. Meanwhile, Dav continues to go in. We, now we actually do have a kind of a sustained mid-fight going on. But uh, it will be Randy Nudeman on that on that uh, Samuro moving up to the top lane, looking to see what he can get. So if we're playing it pretty passively, it looks like he wants to put pressure on Rumblerfish rather than just try to passively soak the lane, which I think is probably part of the advantage of of Samuro in this lane, and especially against Kael'thas, a hero who has no self-sustain. But it does seem like Kael'thas is nevertheless able to get the experience that he needs. And we're actually seeing a slight experience lead for minus 10 armor. Both teams will be splitting off to capture their siege camp. Rainer, I thought Rainer was doing it alone for a second, but it looks like the Rainer portrait was overlapping the Morales portrait. As we did see this happen, Rainer did not go for Exterminator, so it was a little bit difficult for him to just capture this by, its, by himself. So Johnny was helping him out. Dab, meanwhile, kind of by himself at the moment. We are going to... Oh, what happened? Oh, I see. Team Randy Newman. They are going to wait because I definitely saw them capturing it. It looks like Nandy Ruman. Oh, okay. I thought it was maybe an intentional wait, and now it looks like it kind of is. <laughs> Why are you putting a potion on that? I don't really quite see the reason for that. Looks like he's waiting quite intentionally. Perhaps he's just going to wait until the objective actually comes up and maybe wait until after they clear out this one. Yeah, they're still not going. <gasps> Anubrak's going to find it. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is hilarious. A free siege camp picked up by minus 10 armor. They <laughs> I don't know. It might have just been picked up too early. And now Nandy Ruman's clearing it by himself. <laughs> that is hilarious. Meanwhile, they're still trying to clear this out. So Team Randy Newman not looking too clean at the moment. And although I like what Team Randy Newman has put together, we definitely have the, you know, the more stable uh, and balanced and really just typical draft out of minus 10 armor, not going for the Abathur composition. I mean, not that Abathur is inherently bad, but it's definitely something that, especially these days in the Poach HGC era, I really don't see Abathur that much. And I guess it's really only like if I see a team like Randy Newman, which is kind of known for sometimes just doing spicy things, that we actually see an Abathur come out again. 
And I'm not even entirely sure how to evaluate an Abathur draft. I do, and even the things that I did say I liked about Randy Newman's draft didn't really have anything to do with the Abathur specifically. Meanwhile, we are going to get some nice lane push pressure out of this Samuro from Randy Nude Man. Going to take out one tower. Might even be able to make it two. Actually, no, he hasn't done any damage to the tower yet. I was actually confusing that with the damage that was done to the wall. Meanwhile, we are going to see Randy Newman moving in to the prisoner camp. Seeing if he can get that, but Dav will interrupt it with the impale out of a new barrack. And yet again, <laughs> it's actually hilarious to say that Minus 10 Armor has already picked up three <laughs> siege camps because of that hilarious invade by Dav. I bet Dav didn't even know that he was going to get that invade. Okay, big stun coming out of Lampko as well as Dav, but Lampko's really low. Unfortunately, they did not have their healer there. It was a 4v3, possibly even a 4.5v3, given that we could see some Abathur hats coming out. And although there were some nice stuns out of Dav and Lampko, they just didn't have enough members of their team here, so there both wasn't the damage to actually complete any kills, as well as there weren't any heals to to actually keep to keep Lampago up on that blaze. Randy Newman, however, taking some damage as a result of those living bombs, will decide to uh, back off, drink some of those healing potions from Deckard. And we are going to see the members of Minus 10 Armor pushing in a little bit further with their Siege Camp. Now they will push away from the Siege Camp, going for the objective. Diablo is stunned, and that will be the Prisoner Camp channeled by the members of Minus 10 Armor. But that's a nice Deckard route. Dav is getting really low, but so is Randy Newman, and he will be the first one to go down. All right, Randall Newman does get out there. Did have to let a Living Bomb expire. And I think that... Oh! What is this? I didn't know that was possible. Oh, my God. This is crazy. This is crazy. Who gets it first? This I've never seen this in my entire life. Oh, my God. Who got it? Did Team Randy Newman... That is absolutely bizarre. And it's a shame that none of you are here in the chat because you should, like, clip that stuff, but... That... I've never seen that interaction happen. I did not know that it was possible for both teams to actually have the prisoner camp channeled. That was bizarre. What a steal by Randy Newman. They I mean they certainly they there are some ways in which they've had a little bit of a rough start to this game, but my god, what a save that is. And I believe that was a steal by by our by our Samuro player, Randy Nudeman. Absolutely bizarre, though. And wow, they're even... Well, not fully engaging past the past the towers, but they're they're using the Black Arrows, enabling the team to get more value. They're, they're going to try to go for a kill on Dagny. Can they make it happen? Randy Nudeman is going in and does decide that he thinks better of it. And instead, as a team, they're going to see if they can get the kill on Dav. And they do succeed in it. And, you know, they've still actually got this cavalry men up. Dagny is trying to put some damage on it. Maybe should have gone for Exterminator instead of the Ace in the Hole. With any luck later on for him, he might get some good value out of the Ace in the Hole. Randall Nudeman, though, will not be so lucky to get out of there alive. Overall, though, I feel like it's a bit of a winning trade for Team Randy New Newman. I was about to call them Team Randy Nudeman. They will eventually just become... Uh, whatever, the, the name of the team will eventually just become whichever member I am currently talking about at that moment. Eventually it will be Team Nandy Roo, man. Alright. Meanwhile, Randy Nude Man is actually getting a lot of work done. I mean, a, a lot of that probably, oh, I don't know about that combustion. That's a disengaged combustion. Oh, that has me worried. I mean, it's a combustion, first of all. Come on. Go, Bunker. Obviously, it's too late for that, but I, ch I challenge all of you, all three of you who are currently in the chat right now, to just go, Bunker. Just do it. Just do it. You won't regret it. A lot of damage going into Dagny from those Sylvanas from the Shadow Dagger. Meanwhile, Randy Nudeman finds an engage. Just kidding. That was Randy Newman found an engage. There will be a Wailing Arrow going out as well. The, the combo does not quite go in the order that I expect it to, with the Wailing Arrow coming out first, then the Wailing Arrow, and it will actually be will actually be a Lightning Breath instead of an APOC. And there have been times when I have been, oh no, Randy Nudeman, I don't know if he gets out of here alive. Let's see if he does. 
I'm going to try to use that Samuro trickery. Does eventually go back to one of the bottom models. And of course, he'll get out of there alive. He's Samuro. Oh, no! <laughs> Did we really just commit the the Stim Drone? Stim Drone. What is the cooldown on Stim Drone? That's a that's a 90 second cooldown, I believe. That's Was it 90 or was it 80? Uh, Stim Drone. That's, that's a 90 second cooldown committed. Just to kill a Samuro. Who eventually did ju juke them out pretty hard. So, although there are some times when I definitely don't approve of certain uh, heroic choices. Uh, in the case of Diablo, things are a little bit different. In general, I actually believe Lightning Breath is, Breath is the better heroic. But I saw just the combo opportunity that Apoc would have had with, with Stay A While and Listen. At the very least, getting Lightning Breath instead does not make their team so dependent on executing their combo and allows them to play just a little bit more normally, since Lightning Breath is is generally a little bit more of a versatile heroic. Now, it seems like Team Randy Nude Man. Hey, there, there we go. We're just calling it Team Randy Nude Man. They're, they're not even Team Randy Newman anymore. Oh, no. R Randall Nude Man's in a little bit of trouble. Now I even combine the names. Randall Nude Man. Randall Nude Man still can't get out of there. He's still so low. He's slowed. And eventually he will get picked off by the penetrating round. Now, while all that is happening, Randy Nude Man, not Randall Nude Man, Randy Nude Man is picking up a lot of pressure just in the other lanes, a lot of split push pressure, a lot of experience gain for their team. Let's even take a look at the stats right here. Uh, but this is also a little suspect. This is a 2v5. So it does look like they will eventually give... Yeah, they're not choosing to engage on this. I, Sylvanas just won't be up in time. And you know what? Let, we're, okay, so we do see... That Abathur has gone for Ultimate Evolution. I don't actually feel that I've seen Abathur use uh, an Abathur clone yet. So it'll be interesting to see when that does finally come online. I don't think they're really... Oh no, Nandy Ru Ruman, how did you get here? He's going to live through this. That's actually kind of crazy that he lived through that. That was a 4v1 and he lived through that. That is bizarre. Meanwhile, Lampico... Choosing to try to find a way to de-push Randy Nudeman, but Randy Nudeman's just going to get out of there. So definitely Team Randy Nudeman playing some pretty crazy macro shenanigans with that with that Samuro. This is the kind of thing where, honestly, if next game is any map that is honestly big, or probably I would imagine we would see the Samuro banned out. Honestly, whether or not Randy Newman even wins this game, I would expect it to be banned out. Uh, nevertheless, it is going to be the Cavalryman going in favor of of minus 10 armor. Attempted engage by Dav. I don't know. And then, oh, but this is potential. Not quite a potential engage opportunity. Okay, actually, it's engage opportunity for Randy Newman. Can we see them pick up anyone? Yes, it's going to be it's gonna be Dagny. Does he get out of there alive? No, he does not. Okay, and there indeed is the clone from Randy Newman. It will be a Sylvanas clone, which... Uh, all things considered, yeah, the Sylvanas clone is clearly the best clone choice that they have. I still wouldn't really look as Sylvanas as really being an ideal clone target, but out of just what they have, it is very clearly the one that they need to pick, especially if if Samuro's not even there. And even if he is, I'm not actually sure how good of a clone target Samuro is. But Sylvanas is at least a DPS hero, and at the end of the day, if you don't know what to to clone, I think any DPS hero will make sense because you will just have a huge amount of damage potential coming around, especially given that the clone, the ultimate evolution, does actually boost the damage of the uh, of whatever hero you cloned, as well as giving them more more movement speed. Lampico, meanwhile, finding himself on an island. Uh, he might even just die here. We're going to see the lightning breath committed. Lampico trying to get out, and he's getting so much healing from Sylvanas, but it's not enough. Just kidding. Healing from Morales. Those names sounded very similar. We're going to see the Stim Drone committed. It is onto Raynor, but Raynor will just get stunned. There will be another stay a while and listen. And it's going to be the Blade Storm from Randy Nudeman picking up two more kills. It's a strange composition, but clearly at this point it's actually working out very, very well for Team Randy Newman. Maybe we even just make this decision. Maybe we just call them Team Randy Nudeman for tonight. All right, meanwhile, Randy Newman, along with Nandy Ruman, will be pushing down pushing down the towers alongside the help of this uh, this boss. They do also have the Black Arrows. They already use the Black Arrows. I don't think they have Black Arrows anymore, but Randall Newman must be getting a lot of stacks. Yeah, oh wow, he's got 128 stacks. 
I was going to say, it seems like whenever he's throwing out that shadow dagger, it's just bursting down fools. And we do see 128 stacks out of him. So I think they're... Obviously, if they can actually get more... The longer the team fights go on and the longer this game goes on, I think the more it does eventually favor Randy Newman. I mean, things are already going in their favor. It's 5-3 to three in structures. They now actually have the prisoner camp set up. And it doesn't look like minus 10 armor. Of course, minus 10 armor at this time. They're trying to soak to, to level 16. And I think they have just barely enough time that they can soak to level 16 and possibly make it back in time to, to de-channel this, if that's the right way of saying it. But it's going to be really tough to dislodge them. Ultimate Evolution is ready. We've got a lot of uh, potions already set up. Where's the Ultimate Evolution? Finally comes out from Randy Newman. There goes the Wailing Arrow. Blaze is really low, and it's going to be Johnny K.A. who goes first from the back line. Randy Nudeman is absolutely killing it on that Samuro as well. Okay, I mean, it didn't look so bad early on, but I mean, at this point, it's really all Randy Nude Man. And yeah, we're just going with that actually saying Randy Nude Man. They're actually, they're about to have a four-level lead. It's not often you see a four-level lead in Heroes of the Storm. Honestly, three-level leads aren't even that common. And when you see a three-level lead, you know someone's in trouble. When you see a four-level lead, that's like, I don't know. It might just be like, all right, what map do you want to, what map do you want to play for next game? And this is going to be a huge wave going down the middle. So many minions. Of course, the cavalrymen. I, I think this has, this has got to be game one in favor of Randy Nude, man. Even if this isn't necessarily the push that does it. Okay, we already have a cavalryman at the core. It's going to be a triple keep play. Honestly, if it's, triple, if it's a triple keep play, I think that means it's game. There's such a huge statistical difference between Randy Newman and minus 10 armor. Okay, yeah, all keeps are gone. And finally, another kill comes in. It will be uh, Dagny going down on that Rainer. The uh, core won't be too far behind. And indeed, that is game number one going in favor of Team Randy Nude Man. All right, so, I mean, in the end, clear kill advantage for Randy Nudeman, 14-3, to three with Randy Nudeman, actually Randy Nudeman this time, on that Samuro, doing, certainly getting a lot of the kills, not the most damage, because, of course, he was doing a lot of split-push pressure, but he was just using his ability to infiltrate the movement speed that he gets on the Windwalk, uh, as well as just the pursuing ability of Bladestorm to just chase down the back line. And I do think that was also a bit of a weakness on the side of minus 10 armor. Uh, their back line, they definitely had very much an exposed and weak. We've got our next draft coming in. So we're going to have Team Randy Newman leading this game, or rather this series, 1-0. to zero. Now, minus 10 armor did take map pick, and they went to a big map. The problem with this is that this puts the Samuro back on the table. If I were them, I would think, like, maybe you can deter the Samuro pick by not going to such a big map. As it is, they've gone to such a big map, and since they're here, I really want to see them just straight up um, ban ban the Samuro. Ban the Samuro. Don't fight into it again. Force Team Randy Newman to go for something just more traditional. And on that end, they might even consider banning out the Abther as well. And it, it could also, it could just be that Randy Newman just wins anyway, and Randy Newman, they're a more established team. They might even just win in a more traditional, you know, two traditional drafts against each other. But I definitely don't uh, see the possibility of... I, I definitely don't think Minus 10 Armor is likely to take this series if they continue to let more of those, those crazy drafts that Randy Newman is known for through. So Deathwing will be banned. So, I mean, at this point, uh, Minus 10 Armor only has one ban left if they do want to go for the Samuro ban. And I'm honestly, I'm kind of worried for them. And there are some other things to consider, just ways in which Minus 10 Armor's backline was kind of left open. Uh, we did see mo most of their backliners were pretty vulnerable to being dove upon. Rainer probably the least, 
But um, and then another thing to consider: you have also someone like their tank was a new Barak, who is generally not quite as good for protecting your backline as he is on engaging on the other team. He generally wants to go in. He's got long cooldowns that are more efficiently used when you are diving into the other team and putting pressure on the opponent's backline rather than trying to defend your own backline. The Blaze. The Blaze is something that could have actually protected. Okay, they're going to let the Samuro through. We'll see if Randy Newman does pick it up again. Uh, the Blaze is something that could potentially help the backline, but not so much with a... not so much with a Combustion. So the combustion, I mean, it, in general, I don't really approve of combustion to begin with, but especially just with how vulnerable the backline was, I think it would have been really important to get a bunker. Nevertheless, obviously, that's a lot of criticism on their draft. Uh, I don't mean to, you know, just, I don't want it to be like I'm roasting them, but just my honest criticism to just what happened here and what I felt was not successful for them and where I want to see things kind of improve moving forward. So already the Stukov, I think, is a better choice. And I'm really happy to see that. That's already an improvement. Vala. Vala is interesting. I mean, I guess Vala might be a little bit better than something like a Rainer for actually fighting on the shrine as long as it is a W build Vala. Meanwhile, the Abathur has already been picked up, something that wasn't taken off the board. I wonder, will we see the Samuro again? I think it's very much in the realm of possibility. And they're gonna, oh no. Oh, not like this. And, and, and this time, Team Randy Newman is not choked out on tanks quite as much, and they're able to secure the Malganus. So in general, this is actually looking quite a bit better for Team Randy Newman. Uh, let's see, their other choices were Stukov, no, sorry, not Stukov, Deckard and Sylvanas. Honestly, if I'm Team Randy Newman, I say probably just pick up those last two picks again. Although, to be fair, the Malganus sleeps would be a little bit redundant with the... Would be a little bit redundant with the stay a while and listen. And now the Sylvanas has actually been taken off the board. So we're going to have to see some different choices out of Team Randy Newman. But honestly, they've already got the Samuro. They've already got the Abathur. That's already something that's really, really strongly in their favor. And we can see them do things. Like even in the very first Punisher, they could even just give it up. And then just try to get a lot of split push pressure on that Samuro. They could probably take out an entire fort while the Punisher, even if a Punisher is captured, only gets, like, the front wall against them. So uh, these next few picks are really important in terms of, like, how are they actually going to deal with the Samuro? And this... Okay. And it's funny, because I had actually talked in the last game. This this basically means... I, I'm guessing this is basically a main tank, Arthas. Arthas is classified as a tank according to the game, but historically, especially at the, the highest levels of professional play or semi-professional play, Arthas is really a solo laner. He is, in high level play, he's played almost exclusively in the solo lane, but with this setup, it actually looks more like probably an Arthas main tank, even though, even though Imperius is technically a bruiser. I might even think that Imperius might work better as a main tank than Arthas would. Ooh. Now, that's interesting, though. That'd make things a whole lot more interesting. And that might have last pick. Although, obviously, I've got big questions out of... Um, out of minus 10 armors draft so far. That Maya pick throws in just enough chaos that I feel like if they get a good engage, they might actually be able to get a lot of kills, and this could actually possibly bring them back into the series. Now, meanwhile, on the side of Team Randy Newman... Uh, we do see the Rhaegar as well as the Rainer picked up in the last slots. The Obviously, the Rainer and the Rhaegar have obvious synergy with each other. And I think that's also something that really helps Melganus. Melganus, uh, as a tank, although there are many strong things about him, he doesn't quite have the engage potential of something like maybe a Diablo or an Anubarak, at least in terms of speed uh, and burst movement. So at least the, the speed on the Bloodlust, may, I think, makes it a little bit easier for Melganus to set up in his engages. All right, excuse me, and it's time not to go to a draft, but to our game. It's going to be game number two between Minus 10 Armor and Team Randy Newman. Minus 10 Armor, we're going to see Rumbler Fish on the, <laughs> that's the Arthas. Lompico will be playing as the Maev. Dagny will be playing as Vala. Johnny K.A. on the Stukov. And finally, it will be Dav on the Imperius. Meanwhile, on the other side, going to be Randy Newman 
on the Abathur. Nandy Ruman on the Rhaegar. Randall Newman will be playing as the Rainer. Randy Newman on the Malganus. And finally, it's Randall, no, Randy Nude Man will be playing as the Samuro yet again. So this is going to be tough. And, uh, of course, you know, just trying to be unbiased, I don't want to rule anything out yet. Don't want to count anyone out yet. And I think you know, with possibly good engages out of this Maev, we could possibly see minus 10 armor get enough kills that they might actually be able to steal this game. Uh, that being said, I feel even if they are able to do that, I expect them to be at a structural disadvantage for most of this game. Because I think that's just part of what... I think that's just part of what Randy Nudeman on that Samuro is going to do. And I'm a little bit concerned, although, I, like, I don't... I don't think they really even drafted minus 10 armor. Uh, I don't think they even really drafted well to deal with the Samuro. But what I do think they drafted well on is the possibility to win... To, to actually just win the team fights really, really hard. And that's what I think they need to count on. Some roll swaps, too, as well. Uh, Lampico was their solo laner. Now he's more of their damage flex. Da Dav, I believe, or Dave, I believe, was their main tank. Now he's more going to be in the solo lane. And it will indeed be the Imperial solo lane, which is traditionally what he is supposed to be. But it does also look like he is struggling with Randy Nudeman. Now, traditionally, Imperius is your solo laner. But especially in this setup, I think he's going to struggle really, really hard. Imperius' wave clear is actually quite poor, especially if you do not tech into W at level 1. Now, obviously, I know reasons why people don't always go for the W on level 1, but it's it's just going to make your wave clear that much worse, and especially against something like uh, the Samuro. We already see a lot of damage pressure being put on these towers. One tower is already about 60% of its health. Meanwhile, down here, we're going to see Nandy Ruman potentially in trouble. Double root! They could get the kill on Nandy Ruman. And this does create an experience advantage in favor of... In favor of minus 10 armor. I'm still definitely favoring Team Randy Newman to take it, especially with the Abathur Samuro being let through in the draft. But I am seeing, obviously, we do have a kill out of minus 10 armor, and I feel like I do see a potential win condition for them. I think they have the, the potential to hard win the team fights, and then with the Arthas, if they do go for the Syndragosa, they can get a lot of value off of those punishers. Meanwhile, Dagny needs to get out of here! Taken way too much damage from that tower. Nearly was bitten to death by the Nandy Ruman. All right, will be Bruiser Camp picked up by minus 10 armor, but this does mean they are behind in terms of shrine positioning. So it does mean Team Randy Newman will establish a Skeletal Defender advantage. They're establishing it quick, especially with Dagny having to hearth back to base. So Lompago throws in the Shade of Vengeance, but, I mean, not to achieve much at this time. If, if anything, it probably should not have gone in there because now it's on cooldown and can't attempt uh, more of a concerted engage with it. Okay, they need to get some kills here. Actually, I mean, it's early, off in the, early enough in the game that it might not hurt them too much if they don't. But I f just feel like that's the way their comp works, and that's what they have to do if they want to stand a chance and try to force a game three. Okay, you know, at least with their... Given the fact that we do see the Samuro is not uh, there, it does look like minus 10 armor might just succeed in picking up this shrine. It's cutting it close, though, but only a few Skeletal Defenders left, and they'll get it. They just need, Vala just needs to throw in a multi-shot. All right, they will eventually get it, but can they do it without getting any other further kills? First, or rather, the next kill will be on the Malganus. And now we did see Dagny did go for the auto attack build, generally regarded as the worst of Vala's builds, and I think particularly problematic on this map where it one of the reasons to get Vala, I mean, aside from general things Vala does, is you also want those those empowered multi-shots as a way of clearing the shrine a little bit faster. And that was also something that was, you know, concerning me towards the end. Oh, we'll finish that sentence a little bit later because it does look like we will have a pause. Or maybe this gives me perfect time to finish that sentence. Uh, as we did see that... Um, as we did see that... 
there was just a time when I saw they needed to, to finish capturing the skeletal defenders. The Vala is something that with multi-shot, especially empowered multi-shot, where you tech into multi-shot at 4 and 7, does make her very effective at actually clearing the skeletal defenders. So it looks like we do have a minor problem. Uh, <laughs> apparently one of the members of Randy Nude Man uh, accidentally turned their monitor off. And it wasn't even them, it was a, a family member who accidentally turned it off. So they are trying to, they are trying to just reestablish the connection, get their monitor back online, so we can get back into this game. Uh, I don't believe I am a referee, so I will not be responsible for any unpausing. If you are just joining us, as I do see a few more people joining us, we are in game two of minus ten armor versus Team Randy Nude Man. And yes, I did say that on purpose. Team Randy Nude Man is they they are in the lead. They do have a game. They won the game off the strength of an Abathur Samuro composition. And they actually got it for the second draft as well. All right, it does look like we might be getting ready to go back into our game very soon. So I'm going to throw it back over to our game as we do see. Um, we at least see that they're ready. So it'll just be a matter of time before we do actually see someone on pause. All right, we will have our countdown. All right, then. So, members... Oh! <laughs> And eventually we do see Randy Nude Man is killed off, rather unfortunately for him. And that does give def definitely push opportunity. Nandy Ruman sticking around there with not enough health, and eventually he will go down. Yes, Team Randy Nude Man. Oh no, Randall Nude Man needs to be really careful as well. Even though that was right in front of a fort, I think if the rest of the team committed, they actually could have killed Randall Nude Man. So right now things are actually looking a lot better. For minus 10 armor. They're making something of this game. And I mean, of course, they definitely don't have a draft that is even capable of really de-pushing the, the split push pressure out of the Samuro. But it looks like they're basically looking for a different win condition. They're not just trying to, trying to play even. Instead, they're trying to draft a, a composition that has a lot of engage potential and could possibly just result in a kill, especially if Team Randy Newman is not going to commit more than... is not going to commit the the Samuro to the team fight, and especially pre-10. But we don't have pre-10 conditions much longer. However, Nandy Ruman does go down. All right, I really want to see the members of Minus 10 Armor make something happen with that kill. I think... Uh, invading the mercenary camp here is a possibility. I think another possibility is that they get both of these camps, and then a third possibility is that they just straight up push down the lane and make sure it does go down. So it looks like they will take that third possibility. Abathur trying to delay, but only delaying the inevitable, and this will be a fort taken down by the members of Minus 10 Armor. So I was already wrong about one thing. I was wrong about Minus 10 Armor being behind in structures all game. Instead, they actually take out the structures first. But, you know, I am a little worried to see about how will things change when the members of Randy Nude Man actually make it to level 10 and Heroics come online. So, Randy Nude Man has a lot of engaged potential themselves between the Rainer, the Bloodlust Rhaegar. So, I think... I, I think it was going to be a lot easier for Minus 10 Armor pre-10. Now that we're no longer in pre-10 and we'll never have those conditions again, I think they need to be very, very decisive. Things like this. If this Rhaegar is here, they, that needs to be punished. Like, if he's pushing that far forward by himself, that needs to be like a Maev going in, the rest of the team are rotating in there to try to get a kill. All right, they will pick up their Bruiser Camp. And I guess for... I guess for them, it almost doesn't even matter whether they get to the the shrine first or second, because really what they're looking for are kills. And, and that might sound obvious, but I really feel their their team, their composition is built in a way that it's better at getting kills. With the heavy engage potential. Now the engage potential rests more primarily on the Maev, secondarily on the Imperius, and lastly on the on the Arthas. All right, they did get the engage on Malganus, but he does activate Carrion Swarm. He will be okay. Rumbler Fish is on his island though, trying to chase down Randall Newman, and it doesn't actually look like we do have a Syndragosa from Rumbler Fish. Okay, what is their target? Bloodless will be committed, but Nandy Room in his silence, and my game is lagging. However, the kills will be traded out. That will be Stukov down as well, and the next death will be on to. 
I couldn't even tell. I think it was Rumblerfish. Okay, kills will actually be traded out two to one, but the problem is we've got no healer. I think we actually have no healer from either team, so both teams are going to have to back off, and this actually does benefit minus 10 armor, so... In some ways, I think so I'm having to eat some of my words because there are a lot of things about the way Minus 10 Armory is playing this draft in the second game very, very well. They're about to have their second Punisher, Randy Newman, looking for, I don't know, looking for a sleep right there, but I think he realized that worst case scenario there is that I actually gets stunned by John Cena and then finds himself without Carrion Swarm to get out of there. Here's a chance he actually could have died. Okay. Okay, he does manage to successfully bait the Punisher over the wall. I was wondering. That was looking questionable for a second. Randy Nude Man trying to get out of there. I think just trying to look to see what pressure he can put on the back line. Primarily Johnny K.A. Oh, no. Randy Nude Man is going to go down. The real one actually got stabbed by Imperius. And now Randy Newman's in so much trouble. I don't think he is carrying Swarm. No, he doesn't. Okay, but I think he's out of range. So, yeah, minus 10 armor are actually doing very well in this second game. Let's see if they can keep it up. Certainly one way in which I'm really being forced to eat my words here is that they actually let the Samuro through, and now they're actually proving that they can play against it. Last game just looked so dominant in favor of Team Randy Newman. Uh, the adjustments for... For the members of Minus 10 Armor working out real well. The Stukov being not as much of a liability as that Morales. As well as just their their kind of their hard engage potential with their triple melee draft is, is working out quite well. Okay, meanwhile Dav right now is about 60% of his health on Samuro. He is cut off from his team. So, oh, this could be the engage for Team Randy Newman. Will we see the Bloodlust committed right here? Okay. I don't remember if the... Okay, now the Bloodlust is in, but that's going to be a silence. The Stukov is actually doing so much work. Yeah, the, the difference between Johnny's, Johnny's contribution between the last game and this one is night and day. Not only is, is Stukov less of a liability than Morales, he's actually getting a lot of value there. It was really a three-man silence from the Lurking Arm that really, really stuffed out that engage from Team Randy Newman after they activated the Bloodlust. And they're going to see if... Okay, Randy Newman will use the Abathur clone. Dagny needs to be real careful here. He needs to, like, not get any tower aggro. He needs to not do that. <laughs> Dagny being way too aggressive there. I don't know what happened. He's a Vala. He's tanking too much of the, t of the tower damage. He needs to, like, at, at those times, he needs to back up, wait behind his tank, wait for those Stukov heals to come in. I guess one of the things, oh, does Randy Newman, he does not get there in time for the invade. I mean, I guess one of the things that's tough about Stukov is Stukov is very much a sustained healer. His healing does come out a little bit slow, but, I mean, that's because he's throwing around a healing pathogen that's literally going to heal your entire team. So... Dagny's got to be a little bit more patience on, patient on that. Meanwhile, members of... Wow, they're, they're looking to invade this. They've only got four here. They don't even have Dagny, but they'll get it. That's quite an invade. They've got 16 talent tier advantage. We've got a wave clear storm, but luckily Bladestorm Blade Storm only has a 25 second cooldown. So it will be up in time for the, for the objective. Now, this game has, has been so much better for Minus 10 Armor. It's still very much in the realm of possibility that um, Randy Newman can still take this. Uh, we do have a fort that's down to about 70 or 80% of its hit points. If if Randy Nude Man does get some nice uh, blade storms on the back line, he could potentially still get a pick on... Oh, but instead it might be the pick on him. I don't think he has any copies, and he doesn't, and he'll go down as well. Going down a little too cheeky with that aggressive wave, wave clear. Now this does mean that Randy Newman do get uh, do get a lead on the shrine, but of course eventually they will have to give it up. They've only got four members of their team alive, and one of those members is an Abathur. So just something about this variation on their draft from Randy Nude Man not working out as well as it was in the last game. All right, 
right, so that will be yet another Punisher picked up by the members of Minus 10 Armor. I believe this is their second Punisher. No, this is their third Punisher. This is their third Punisher. Uh, team Randy Newman looking around to see where they can get value elsewhere around the map. They will be picking up all of the other, all of the siege camps that are available. Obviously, this one not available for another 45 seconds. But they will get the middle siege camp. Imperius's wave clear is still quite poor. He did not tech into either of the wave clear talents. There is one at uh, level one. That would be the W talent, and then there is the activatable at level at level uh, seven. But he didn't get either of those. So Imperius has very very poor wave clear. And meanwhile, Punisher is kind of being baited away from the lane, going all the way into the bush. Okay, this is still about an 80, 75% Punisher, so, so they can still push with this. Although, obviously, Imperius <laughs> really having a hard time doing this. This is... I think maybe he should have gone for at least either uh, one of those talents. They're seeing if they can get Randy Nude Man again. Wow, they're choosing to see if they can stagger out the kills. Can they get it? No, they're not this time. This time, he will manage to juke them out. <laughs> and Dav is still here clearing the waves. All right, as, as amusing as it is to watch Dav attempt to clear these waves, uh, things are looking real good for Minus 10 Armor. I mean, they've actually been in control pretty much this entire game, and they should have an advantage going into the next shrine, unless there's enough time for Team Randy Nude Man to soak all the way to level 20. So we, the bush is being pinged. Randy Nude Man roaming around there. Level 20 should be picked up very soon, so it, even if it's not in time for the Shrine, there will definitely be a decent period of time when Minus 10 Armor will have a talent tier advantage. So the, just the question is, what can they do with that? Can they find a team fight somewhere? I think this is a Rhaegar that's pushed out far enough that they could rotate on him rather than trying to chase around Samuro. So they don't quite find the rotation they're looking for. They're still over a level advantage, so I really want them to make something happen. Just another potential idea is that they could just choose a lane, clear the waves, and just try to push down it, which is, I'm assuming is at the moment what they're going for in this top lane. And no, I'm, I'm wrong, actually. Okay, they will go for the camp. So they do get the camp. And then they should be able to push with that down the top lane, and that will probably be a better push than just pushing with the minions. But they're starting to lose time on that 20 talent tier advantage. It's really slow. Again, I feel like with the positioning on this Rhaegar, I feel this is very exploitable, but they're just not in the position to go for it. Lompko looking to see if he can catch Randall Nude Man on that Rainer, but Randall Nude Man is just right out of his reach. That was actually not Randall Nude Man, that was Randall New Man. So we'll get a little bit of a push right here. But soon, I think level 20 is going to be picked up by Randy Newman. And once they pick it up, they can even just try to turn this around and engage because they have they have a fort here. Okay, Shade of Vengeance will go in, but it's not committed to actually to an actual teleport. So certainly the front wall is gone, and we're even seeing some very light damage being done onto the keep, but it will be cleared out quickly enough. And I don't know. I'm a little... A little concerned about that. There, were, I don't think there was a huge amount achieved by by the members of Minus 10 Armor. That was almost possibly a little too safe. And now they're going to be staring down a shrine, next shrine phase, uh, at just both teams having, having level 20 talent tier. A single level advantage, which gives them a little bit of a statistical advantage, but it's not as convincing as ha actually having level 20 over them. So this is a reasonable fight for Team Randy Nudeman. And honestly, if they win this fight, they can, they can make a lot happen on that. Certainly, Randy Nude Man, it's very unlikely that they could actually get a win. But, oh, first we actually have to worry about Randy Nude Man. Okay, he does manage to get out of there. Or does he? Just barely gets off the Carrion Swarm in time. But even after he gets it off, he's going to be so low in hit points. So is Randy Nude Man. The Bloodlust is committed, but they're all so low that Randy Nude Man, or whichever one it is, can't go back in. And that will be Malganus dying. Randy Nude Man looking to see if he can trade out a kill on Dav, but I don't think it's happening. Kiel comes in from Stukov, and I think the members of Minus 10 Armor at this point need to dial it back a little bit. 
this is one of the times where I feel like maybe don't go in too aggressively. Just make sure you get the objective because this objective will be very, very high value. They're getting a lot of mercenary camp pressure to push along with it. And by a lot, I mean literally mean one siege camp. Uh, but they're going to be pushing on a lane that doesn't have a front wall. It's only a keep. So they'll get it. And they get the kill on Randy Nudeman or whichever one it was. I don't even know. It was Samuro. That was exactly the kill that they really needed not to happen. Really, I mean, they really, they didn't, they didn't want any kill. They don't want staggered deaths. That's... I mean, th this this Punisher takes out the keep minimum. This is this is a keep minimum. Uh, and practically speaking, honestly, it probably should just be game here. And this probably should just be, you know, us going to game three. Okay, so I think, okay, Bloodless will be committed. Do they try to take an engage on, on, just on the team of minus 10 armor? Doesn't actually seem like it's working out that well in their favor. It's the members of Randy Newman going down really low, and the first kill will come on to the Rainer. Meanwhile, Randy Newman on that Malganus, looking like he's in a, quite a bit of trouble, especially with that hard engage there. Uh, just checking. Yes, we did get the bio biotic armor. And that will be game two, taken by the members of Minus 10 Armor. And I gotta say, I am actually super impressed. Minus 10 Armor really did a fantastic job in that game. Uh, I mean, first of all, like, the way the first game went, like, on the one hand, it almost made me wonder, like, is Randy Newman just the better team? Are they just gonna win this series no matter what? And then on the other hand, I thought, like, is... is Minus 10 Armor just not able to deal with this Samuro Abathur shenanigans? And then... They don't ban it out, and they just fight back into it again and prove that they're just capable of simply stepping it up and playing better. And I think a lot of that actually does have to do with their draft. The draft was a little bit, certainly until I saw the Maev, I thought, like, this this is not a good draft. But once the Maev came in, that was like, oh, I see the intention right now. Like, that's, that's real hard engaged. That's like, we're looking to go in and we're trying to get kills. Uh, and again, that sounds obvious, but it's it's a very hard engage comp between the Maev, the Imperius. The Maev is really the primary engage. And then as long as Arthas and Imperius can follow up, it's like whoever gets targeted basically has their hands off the keyboard and just has to pray. So we will be going to a game three. I, like, if I'm honest, uh, members of Minus 10 Armor did a great job of shutting me up. I honestly did not expect this to go to a game three. So I, I'm so impressed by Minus 10 Armor here. So yeah, I, I really don't entirely know where to go from here. The only thing I, I guess I would continue to recommend is continue to pick non-Morales healers. But other than that, like, my, my recommendation to, to ban out the Samuro and or the Abathur, they've proven that they don't have to, so I'm not even comfortable saying that they should do that. So, first pick will go to the members of minus 10 armor or rent well first pick and first ban and they're gonna ban the sylvanas yet again yeah i like that uh, out of all those heroes sylvanas i think was although obviously not the not the linchpin of their strategy like the way the abathur or the samura was she is just something that makes those push those pushes very lethal when you are pushing up against it with the objective or trying to push de push against it rather Zul will be banned. So I think Zul, uh, I'm trying to think. I feel like the Zul might have been banned out by both teams. Zul is still not exactly, it's it's not primarily a target ban though. Since it was, oh actually, it wasn't picked, it hasn't been picked at all this season by minus 10 armor. So it's, it's not a target ban at all. It's strictly, strictly a meta ban. Which does mean that, I mean, for the most part, they're untargeted. The Tracer is banned. Tracer, crazy. I'm trying to look. <laughs> Team Randy Newman has not played Tracer this season. I can't even recall them playing Tracer in other seasons. Not that I follow along with every single one of their game, but at the very least, I have their stats for this season. So it is surprising to see the Tracer ban as well.
So what will be next? I mean, these are honestly kind of strange bands. And then that's almost more like just a very typical vanilla band. So I feel like a lot of power picks are up for both of these teams, whatever they are. I think uh, I definitely Randy Newman are the team with more of the potential power picks. So now I feel like with Randy Newman really having most of their tools at their disposal, I, I think they really have an advantage here. So ETC will be picked up by Dav on the side of minus 10 armor. And ETC, yeah, that is their most commonly played tank. Uh, before, it was actually tied with Garrosh, but given the fact that now it actually has been picked, uh, this is actually the fourth pick that he has, or rather the that the team has on ETC, since they do some role swapping. Okay, Stukov will actually be taken by Randy Newman. Jaina picked up by Randy Nudeman. So the Stukov is not an option again for the members of um, Minus 10 Armor. So Johnny can't play Stukov. I'm hoping he's just got other healers up his sleeve other than Stukov and Morales because like it's it's really like an anyone but Morales situation really just about any healer is going to probably work better than Stukov. <laughs> I say that and there is the Morales. So I'm a little bit disappointed to see that and I mean the crazy thing is looking at their data it doesn't even look like they played that in series before today. I don't know if maybe it's like a different player who hasn't played in the previous series, but I'm very, very worried about the Morales. At the very least, I think in this game, uh, ETC is a better tank for protecting the Morales than either the Blaze or the Anubrak was in game one. But I'm still worried about the Morales. If we do see some kind of like dive heavy comp, honestly, even if we just see the Samuro again, I'm very, very worried, worried about the Morales. So with any luck, they'll be able to protect it. So Imperius will be banned out by Randy Newman. So the, that's a respect ban. So a respect ban on the Imperius. Interesting to see that actually took this long to come out. And the Garrosh will be banned out uh, by by minus 10 armor. That's interesting. How much do, do... Okay, it does look like Randy Newman. It's not their favorite tank, but they have played it once before today. So I guess it's just something that they really don't want to deal with. We don't have as strong of a tank ban as we did in game one. So there's still a lot of options. There's still a new Barak. There's still... Who else? There's still Malganus, actually. Still Diablo. There's still Murden, but I don't like that as an option. Okay, it will be the Diablo and the Phoenix. And... Ooh, thank you, Jinxie Cat, with the raid. Uh, with what we have so far, I'm... Starting to like the draft out of Randy Newman again. The Phoenix, there's very, very clear synergies. Um, I would not so much expect an APOC out of Diablo this time, because I think the better combo potential actually does come out from the Lightning Breath. <laughs> Lightning Breath into the Purification Salvo. Wow! Alarak will be picked up by the members of Minus 10 Armor. That's actually, sometimes, that's a pickup for Randy Newman, although it definitely wouldn't make sense in their current draft, so I don't think it was really stolen. And they're going for the Arthas again. And you know what? This time, because they have ETC Arthas, I'm liking the Morales pickup actually a lot better now because they have much better walling tanks. Both ETC and Arthas are a lot better at being wall tanks compared to Blaze and Anubarak, who are looking a little bit more for the dive. I think in the end, I... It's, it's actually tough to call this either way. Uh, I would say when I only saw... Before we saw the last two pickups for minus 10 armor, I think I would have given the draft over to Team Randy Newman because of the combos that they're building towards, a lot of the damage potential that does come out. But we're seeing a similar style of draft for minus 10 armor that they had last game where it's... There's a lot of kill pressure. A lot of kill pressure. Uh, last game, they did go with the triple melee. This time, they have technically triple melee because Alarak is a melee assassin, although I typically think of him more as like a mage with a melee attack. But nevertheless, he could put on a lot of kill pressure, similarly to the way that the Maiev did. And let's actually get into our final game in this series. So I'm glad that we do have our raid coming from Jinxie Cat because you guys are joining us at just the right time. We have a series here that honestly I didn't even think would go to the third game, but instead it will. We're going to have the members of Minus 10 Armor 
uh, they actually have a game on the board. Point on the board. Dav will be on the ETC. Johnny on the on the Morales. Rumbler Fish on the Arthas. Dagny will be playing as Lavala, and finally Lampico on the Alarak. Meanwhile, Team Randy Newman is going to be Randall Newman on the Mephistos. Just kidding, I meant the Mouthale. Nandy Ruman on the Phoenix. Randy Nudeman on the Jaina. Randy Newman on the... God, for some reason these heroes are so hard to figure out at this time. On the Stukov. And finally, it's going to be Randy Newman on the Diablo. All right, so we're starting mid-fight. We do have some stacks to look for. Uh, we do have we do have the Frost Presence on Rumblerfish. Uh, that Frost Presence is going to be obviously just something that will make it a lot easier for him to control the other team once he gets that stacked up, not only increasing the range of his... of the range of that ability, but, of course, also making it so that it even roots in the path. So there's a stack... And, of course, there is also the Alarak stacking potential, but that hasn't happened yet because we haven't seen any kills yet. So things are a little bit different than I expected. It's actually going to be ETC in the solo lane and not Arthas. Typically, Arthas would really be more your solo laner between these two, but ETC definitely has the solo laning potential. Could be a stage dive ETC, but I don't even think it has to be. In fact, we don't actually see too many interrupts for Mosh Pit on the side of... Randy Newman. That could potentially come back to bite them. Now, that could be a reason to go APOC, even though I think aside from the need to counter Mosh Pit, I think Lightning Breath would be a far better pick here. And... Uh, other than that, it's the Stukov. And the Stukov, to be fair, is, I would say, probably one of the best answers to Mosh Pit in the entire game. But he's... Unless we see uh, Apoc, he's the only one. Engage attempt onto Lompico, but he will just telekinesis out of there. Dagny being a little too aggressive, and that has, has been one of the failings of minus 10 armor. Sometimes Dagny's positioning, not being careful, uh, getting very, very low on his health, sometimes positioning a of hit, uh, ahead of the rest of his team. So hopefully that isn't something that they pay for too hard here. Now, certainly one of the advantages that Randy Newman has here is that with the Malthiel, Malthiel against an ETC, it's very, very clear who's got the double soak lane pressure uh, here. <laughs> uh, Malthiel, very, very good wave clear, great at double soaking. ETC, uh, he is not, not even at level seven yet, so we don't even know what talent he's going to get at level 7 if you will Oh no, Dagny as I called. That's a, such an easy such an easy shadow charge opportunity and yet again Dagny will get picked. And a rather unfortunate timing. Johnny K is now not in such a good position either. This could be an engage does use a grenade to stop Randy Newman. And I think they just need to be content with only getting their own bell tower. So obviously that positioning from Dagny is very much something that they're going to have to clean up a bit. Kind of cost them even the uh, potential to contest that, that altar. And it's even something that we saw from Dagny in the last game. The game where they won. The game where they... It was something like, I don't know, 14 kills to 3. But I'm pretty sure... Well, I'm, I'm not sure if all of those were Dagny dying, but there were times when he just got so low uh, going so far forward, and it was a very close call. And this time, we actually did see him pay for it. So, members of Randy Newman will pick up their Sapper Camps. Sapper Camp is not yet picked up by the members of... Why is Dagny going... Oh, Dagny is trying to support Dav. But then that leaves, that leaves the rest of uh, Minus 10 Armor down here as a three-man... With Johnny K.A., he really has... They have to give this up. They, they just need to back out. Like, Johnny K.A. can't come back in here. He, he can't flank the rest of the team as Morales. So they're holding out at the moment. Dagny, unfortunately, I think he might go down again, and indeed he does. So Dav is trying to go in to help. They're going to see if they can trade out any kills. They just might be able to get Randy Newman. It's going to be a close call, but it looks like they won't even get it. 
So unfortunately, a little bit of, I don't know, either miscommunication or just some mistakes with where they chose to rotate. I mean, in general, especially Morales. Like, out of all healers, one who is so dependent on, on her tanks for protection. I think, like, I don't even really see any reason for Morales to, like, split off from the four-man like that. I guess the intention was to try to help ETC. But man, you know, what was looking like a decent start for both teams and looking even-ish is now looking massively in favor of Team Randy Newman. They've got a level and a half advantage, they, so that means they, they picked up that, that bell tower for free, pretty much. They're about to have level 10 advantage, so they can do a lot of things with that. They can just straight up pick, get the boss if they want and just get four easy shots. They can, they'll most likely be in a position where they will still have level 10 talent tier advantage. Of course, they can actually just look for a fight and try to get kills, but they do engage into Rumblerfish. Rumblerfish does activate uh, Icebound Fortitude, so he's not under much threat there. Arthas is very, very difficult to kill with all the survivability mechanics that he does have. Uh, it can sometimes be weak to displacement, but in terms of just trying to just burst him down and damage him, he certainly has a lot of power to resist. So obviously going to be very important for minus 10 armor. Dagny got to be super careful. Like if he was just about any further... Yeah, I was going to say, Apoc does come in. Can they convert that into a kill onto Dagny? And they do! Engaging right in front of the towers, and it will actually be an Apoc and not a Lightning Breath. So... Kind of my predictions were opposite both ways. We're going to see the the APOC when I would have predicted the Lightning Breath, and the Lightning Breath when I would have predicted the APOC. <laughs> now, obviously, we see what he can do with the APOC there, getting the single target engages, just using the straight Shadow Charge APOC combos. Something that can be very, very powerful. And then there is the follow-up from... Um, there is the follow-up from Randy Nudeman, and I guess in that case, they're just counting on the Jaina slows to try to benefit the Phoenix Purification Salvo. Now, Randy Newman is kind of here by himself. Okay, he does get some support from Randy Newman. Counter-Strike will go out, but there will also be... That will indeed be a stage dive ETC. Doesn't actually choose to continue the pressure onto Randy Newman. Instead, they're trying to go for Randy Nudeman on the Jaina. And I think it will just be a trade in ults. Neither team actually securing any kills. Dave or Dav is really low, however. So many ults actually going out without actually achieving anything. Okay. And, all right, Dav will get engaged on. Still a lot happening here. Randy Newton, it's going to be Rumblerfish, who I think is in trouble. Dav does go in again. And I think they're eventually just getting too low, and it will be both of the frontliners, well, one of, one of, two of three, technically, out of members of Minus 10 Armor going down. Will be Vala going down as well. In the end, I think I'm a little bit concerned. Uh, I think there's, I think we're starting to see some chinks in the draft out of, out of Minus 10 Armor. What I think part of what's happening is that they are committed to a Vala as their solo range DPS. So I think if the fights go too long, then I think uh, I think the members of Randy Newman win the sustain war. And I think the Stukov versus the Morales is also partly responsible for that. Although Morales probably... I'm actually not sure whether you'd consider... I mean, certainly, I guess Morales, certainly the way she does her healing, it is sustained. But in some ways, she's also kind of good against burst in the sense that... She has the armor, but I'd say it's more of sustained healing. But Stukov might be the better sustained healer because he heals your entire team. All right, it is going to be the the fort was picked up by the members of Randy Newman, and of course they're just defending it. I mean, they've got a three-level advantage with that. So where is the soak missing? Oh my god, look at the difference. Maybe we can also see that from here. But there's so much more experience in favor of Malthill compared to the ETC yeah, I gotta say, and let's actually take a look back at the talents. And this, it is an Echo Pedal ETC, so that is tech for Wave Clear. But it looks like it's not enough. I think Lampago goes down here. No, just kidding. But who does go down? We're gonna see the APOC. The APOC will confirm the kill onto Vala, but Rumber, Rumblefish will, Rumblerfish will be able to make it out of there. Meanwhile, we're gonna see the engage attempt onto Johnny. Does Johnny get out of here alive? I think he does. The fort is actually still deactivated, so they're trying to engage into this fort while it's still deactivated, but they're having trouble securing the kill. So this is where the Vala solo range, solo range DPS 
I think, especially with an auto attack build, is very, very problematic. I think, especially if you're going with Vala solo range DPS, where you're probably going to lose the sustain war, you have the Alarak, which indicates that you actually want to get the quicker kills. I think this should have been a hungering arrow build out of Dagny. Something that would have actually contributed to the burst. As it is, I mean, if anything, I, I feel the auto attack build not even contributing that well to the sustain because you're not putting on that spread damage with the W either. Okay, Randy Newman will be pulled forward, but the engage will be going from Randy Newman onto Dagny. Dagny yet again under threat, but does get enough heals, and it's Lampago who does go down first. Probably not having, yeah, not having the... Just not having the uh, Counter-Strike up and available that time. And this is actually starting to look very, very rough for the members of Minus 10 Armor. It's feeling a lot like Game 1, and it's amazing, because I really was hoping this we would have a really close last game. Uh, unfortunately, so far, we are, we are having a blowout. And, you know, since a lot of you missed uh, the first two games in this series, just to kind of recap it, first game was a blowout in favor of Team Randy Newman. Second game was a blowout in favor of minus 10 armor. So it did bring us to a third and final game. I was hoping that our third one would be close, but instead it's Randy Newman kind of repeating their performance from the first game. Trying to find Lompico. Counter-Strike is down, but so is Shadow Charge and Overpower, so they don't really have a re-engage onto Lompico, so we will be okay for now. Yet another Cindergosa. This could be their chance. I feel like the stage dive wasn't far enough, though, and now ETC gets rooted by Jaina, and it seems like a lot of their engage potential isn't entirely isn't entirely capitalized on. In the end, they will take advantage of that to get back their tower, which has been a long time coming. But now they're in also their positional advantage is is rather weak where we see Malthael already already targeting this. Let's see if Dagny can kite this for long enough that he can actually stall this out. But this also means that, okay, it actually looks like Randy Newman giving up the bottom. Giving up the bottom altar, which means they're going to make a hard play for this one. Oh, and because they know they can kill Dagny. Okay, there's the engage by Randy Newman, but Dagny does manage to vault out in time to keep himself alive. But they will not be able to get the tower. So it's only four core health left for the members of Minus 10 Armor. One boss will do it. One more altar will do it. Now, this is Towers of Doom, so, of course, this is the map where... <laughs> this is the map that dreams are made of. Anything can happen, but it's not looking good for Minus 10 Armor. Are they... I was wondering, are they just going to, like, try to steal the boss right on... They're going to go for it. This is another time where I really, really wish Dagny had a hungering arrow built. And I think they're going to get away with this. It's kind of crazy that they will. But I very much understand the reasoning for it. They need to take this, more important than getting the core damage for themselves, is that they need to take it off the board for Randy Newman. They don't want uh, Randy Newman to have like a checkmate situation where they can basically choose either altar or boss. Okay, Randy Newman, however, although they don't get a checkmate situation, Dagny's still so far forward. Gotta be so careful. But Randy Newman's suddenly in a lot of trouble. Okay, stage dive goes in. I always feel like, okay, th that's going to be a kill on Randy Newman. They get it. I still feel like I want to see slightly more aggressive stage, dive is stage, stage dives out of Dav. Like, I feel like I want to actually see him stage dive into the team. Instead, it really feels like he's stage diving near his own team and then trying to power slide in. Man, oh, they got that one kill on Randy Newman, but how much did it even achieve? This is uh, Diablo, who he had 100 souls, so he is back up. And now it's a double ultra phase. Either one of these will finish the game in favor of Randy Newman. They, they don't have the option of just picking this up. I guess Dagny wants to just secure it anyway, but they, they need to make sure. Okay, we already have the channel coming in. I don't think... Okay, it was actually interrupted. Dagny's still not getting because he had to dodge an APOC. And the first kill does come out on to... I don't remember who it was. It was it was Rumblerfish. The next kill onto Dav. That's got to be it. That's got to be the end, and it's got to be the game going in favor of the members of Randy Newman as this final ultra is channeled. It was a nice attempt, but in the end, I think it was a misplay for Dagny to be trying to get their own altar. I think they really just needed to commit as five and see if they could hard win that team fight if they had a chance of staying in this game. 
So some nice attempts at the end. Let's actually take a look back at our score screen. Nice attempts at the end by, by minus 10 armor. But in the end, it is team Randy Newman winning that winning this series. Uh, although it was a 2-1, to one, the games that they did win were very, very convincing in their favor. Hello. We got Randy Hello, Newman. Andrew. How's Hello. It going? Hello. Welcome. Feels like it wasn't even too long ago that we that we last talked. That's right. Uh so let's talk a little bit. I mean, obviously as a team, you guys have some interesting picks up your sleeve. What made you guys decide tonight that tonight was the Abather Samuro night? And tell us a little bit more about that composition out of well, you guys. We've had some success with Abathur and Samuro in the past, and it, it felt pretty strong. Um, and so the first game, things went pretty uh, pretty much according to plan. And uh, we were sort of surprised that they let it through uh, in game two. I was extremely surprised. They showed us why they did, because they moved <laughs> us pretty good. <laughs> We decided to get away from the Abathur Samuro in Game Three. Why? Why do? You, why do you think that? Um, basically, things did not quite go according to plan in the second game, where you you repeated the Abathur Samuro. Uh, they did a really good job of just not getting separated. It seemed like they had the Arthas to slow the attack speeds, and they just kind of stayed clumped, and it was really hard to pick people off. And uh, they did a great job of soaking to keep up and soak. Like I feel like. That's been our main advantage as we find ourselves a couple levels up pretty early just from the Abathur Soak um, and just sort of harassing people with Samuro, and that was very difficult. They did a really good job of of having causing trouble to our Samuro. You think any of the changes in the draft, both on your side and theirs, might have also uh, accounted for any of the, the, basically the changes in the performance in Game 2? I think they picked a really good team to, to stop our shenanigans, basically. I, I kind of agree. Yeah. Yeah, they did a nice job. Very, very good. <laughs> yeah, I, I really felt like they they were definitely going for something very lethal. Where even if they mm -hmm. couldn't keep up with with uh, with macro, they were looking to really kill you pretty hard when they finally like took their fights. Yeah, I think that map choice too is pretty good for them because it's kind of hard to avoid the fights. Like we had to all come together and just go into the meat grinder that they had. <laughs> like some of the other maps, we were able to just like completely ignore the objective and take keeps and forts out with Samuro. <laughs> that was not really possible on the uh, Infernal Shrines. So then, how was kind of like how was your approach as a team going into Game Three after you just had your Abathur Samuro actually just shut down without even being banned <laughs> out, and then you had to go into Game Three? coming off of that loss yeah it was uh they had a pretty scary combo at the mave so we were definitely kind of spooked by going back into it but we, we do like abathur on towers of doom um so we we felt pretty good with their two tanks sort of set up that we could just out soak them instead with malfiel or, or double soaker andy there is really a strong uh strong double soaker and, oh yeah you know, that was something that was just yeah, that was a very clear advantage you guys had when at one point I checked the experience and it was literally something like uh, 13,000 for Mouth Ale compared to about 7,000 for ETC. Yeah, and yeah, I think he won us that game pretty handily just yeah. by collecting XP. And then eventually <laughs> the, the, the 11 to 14 level advantage. Yeah, yeah, that, that made fights for them very difficult, especially when we took that bottom left tower. It was pretty hard for them to fight into us there. And then the longer it went on, they just fell further and further behind with the double soaking. It was a tough spot for them. So tonight was Abathur Samuro night. A couple, <laughs> uh, a week or so ago, or some time ago, it was it was Butcher night. Uh, what do you have oh, yeah. in store? What what special treats do you have in store for us next week? Murky. Well, we'll have to tune in and see, I suppose. Gonna we'll maybe watch our uh, A RAM and see if we come up with any. Uh... Oh, is that where, ideas tonight? Is that where you get your ideas? It's Possibly. just, it's just like you, you see what you're just given in a ram, and like, could we do this in a real game? Yeah, yeah, it's like hey, that worked pretty well. Maybe we should keep trying it. That's actually pretty crazy. Uh, it does feel like you guys have had a little bit of a rougher start to your season this time. Uh, right now, you're actually technically three to three in you know win losses. Although one of those losses, I believe, is a forfeit. Uh, yeah. What do you feel might be going? Maybe might be a little bit more challenging this season compared to say maybe the last season of Heroes Lounge. Uh, so we were a slightly different group this one than the Heroes Lounge group. <laughs> a little um, bit hard to tell. <laughs> yeah, we've got a lot of Randy. So I think there's three of us are the same, and two Randys are different. So a um, little bit different team, and then. 
this one was in Division D last um, season, and so we got promoted. So we're enjoying much stiffer competition, but definitely uh-huh. teams seem more able to sort of punish our uh, strange comps. <laughs> it seems, so. it's, As it's opposed been, to really good. a lower division where you might actually just really go ham with, with some butcher. Yeah, it seems like, yeah, in Division D, we were able to just kind of do our usual things, and teams had a hard time stopping it because they often weren't prepared for facing Butchers and Avathers and Samuras and Alarax. And here, teams have seen pretty much everything, it seems like, so it's a little other, tougher. Other than Ban... To broaden our horizons. Other than Ban Cho, although it might be difficult to get a rematch against them. Mm, yeah, true. true. <laughs> you would both have to make it to the, the finals of your sides again that would be fun to get another <laughs> shot at them that was a really good series so. right now on their side they're on their in their division they're i don't know they're looking very strong so yeah i believe that they got a good team um so let's see uh getting close to the end of my series of questions but i'm just going to go with some of my stock ones uh, moving forward sure. what are some of the teams that you're looking forward to playing especially ones that you think either maybe you can run some silly stuff on or think might just provide like a good challenge well, that's a good question. I, I haven't honestly haven't looked that far ahead on on who we've got left <laughs> to face, uh, but I saw there's quite a few teams that have been really like strong in the standings. So it'd be always fun to play against really tough competition and see if we can uh, come up with some uh, <laughs> interesting strategies that might throw them off their winning ways. <laughs> All right, then. Well, I think my last thing just before I do wrap up the interview is just once again, throw the floor to you. Any shout outs or comments, last comments you want to make? Okay, well, first of all, thanks to you and NGS for for casting. It's always fun to play in front of an audience and uh, watch the VODs later on. Uh, We really enjoyed that. It was fun playing with you. And we got a shout out to Zool (laughs) Rules, who's always in chat watching all the NGS games. He does rule. Or she, I suppose. (laughs) True, Um, yes. And um, yeah, Mountain Dew Game Fuel, of course, and all the animation <laughs> out there that's watching. I forget. Did you did you shout out Mountain Dew Game Fuel the last time I interviewed you? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, a funny we one. Stay hydrated while we're you know playing A Rams <laughs> <Okay>. to prepare. <laughs> playing A Rams to prepare. Caffeinated and hydrated. Okay. <laughs> I feel like those are two are sort of at odds, but but we'll go with yeah, it. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> All right. My, my, my cheeks are actually, I'm laughing enough that my cheeks are starting to hurt, which is a good time. I think that's the first time that's actually happened in an interview. Hey, there you go. I think Glad just about would only come from, from a Randy Newman interview. Maybe there's someone else who could, but so far only you guys. <laughs> All right, then. Our best. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Look forward to casting guys again in the future. Cause, cause it's always a good time. All right. We appreciate all the cast and everything you do. So, so keep it up and maybe we'll see you in an ARAM. Maybe as well. You guys have a good night. Take care.